So we're going to be talking about how to improve your speaking um, in your target language. So, you know, I'm under the assumption, you know, so I'm under the assumption that you already have a lot of input and a lot of immersion basically backed up, right, before you start to speak. Because my philosophy when it comes to learning languages is to focus on input first, to focus on comprehension, to focus on understanding language before you start to speak. Because the speaking process is actually very, very simple, right? Once you do all the input first. Like now, if you're a beginner in a language and you want to learn how to speak the language, but you haven't done any comprehension and you haven't tried to understand the language, like understand content in the language, then you need to do that step first because this is going to make speaking a lot easier, right? Basically, the way I like to think about it is like in terms of the amount of time it takes to get fluent, 95% of the time is spent only on reading and listening and in only 5% of that is spent on speaking in terms of getting fluent in a native level, right? So, and this is basically through my experience, I experienced this, right? Because the way I learned Japanese was during the first two years of me learning Japanese, you know, I immersed myself in Japanese every day for six hours a day, right? And I only spent myself, I only、um, listened and read in Japanese. So I never spoke the Japanese language even once. I deliberately avoided to I, I, I avoided speaking because not only was I not even able to do it, but I knew it was like futile because it was all meaningless unless like, you know, I had understood Japanese at very high level. So I made sure that over the course of two years, I spent every day immersing myself in content to understand Japanese more. And once I reached like a fluent level of comprehension, when I went to Japan and decided to speak, I was able to speak like, like really easily. I was able to get fluent within like, Literally, like a week. Like, it took me one week to comfortably put myself and speak and express myself in Japanese. Like, one week, guys. Like, do, do you guys understand how crazy this is? Like, I didn't speak at all. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm like speaking fluent Japanese in like in a week. So, like, that's the thing, guys. And, and, and even like on the first day when you try to speak, like, you're gonna be able to speak the thoughts that you want. Like, like it's what happens, guys, is when you already put all this input in, right? You know, And immerse yourself before you start to speak, what ends up happening is like you know the phrases you have to say because some, sometimes you have a, an idea you want to express and you, you know, like the, the idea you want to express, but you can't recall it, right?、Um, but it's like on the tip of your tongue, but you will still be able to sort of like get by, like even if you have zero experience with speaking, like trust me, guys. If you're able to comprehend English or like you know, any language for that fact at a, almost 100%, you'll be able to speak that language. Like, you will be able to speak it, guys. And you know, that, that's the thing with me. That was my experience. I was able to just like speak it immediately. I was able to kind of like speak. I was able to just like kind of do it. Like, I was like, it was rusty. So, don't get me wrong, it's not g o n n a be perfect Japanese. Like, here's the thing the language is, the language is not g o n n a come out perfect, but it's g o n n a come out fluent. Do you guys know the difference? Like, for example, like, you'll be able to speak and get your point across. But you might have some like, gram, like gram, grammatical errors, you might have some errors in your pronunciation, but that'll fix itself over time the more time to speak, right? And I only recommend you guys practice speaking the language in the country where it's spoken, because that's the fastest way to get extremely fluent, extremely fast once you already have that base, right? But you have to have that base, okay? Because here's the thing, guys like, you w a n t to be able to understand what everyone's saying to you. Now, all you have to worry about is how do I speak, right? Which you're already going to be able to do anyway when you get all this immersion and all this input in. But you only have to focus on how do I express my thoughts rather than worrying about what people have to say to you. You know, because、like, if, you, if you can already understand what everyone's saying to you, then it's very easy to learn how to speak because you're, you're not worried about two things. It's not like you're not worried about what this guy's saying to you because you can't un- understand what this guy's saying to you. And then you have to worry about like, you know, what you have to say back. It's like, no. If you can already, you know, already understand what someone's saying to you back, then you can kind of like, you know, focus on speaking.、Um, so that's why I recommend doing the input because it makes the, the speaking a lot easier. Because here's the thing, guys like, when you already have a good intuition of the language, you'll be able to correct your mistakes when you make the mistakes when you speak. So if you're to speak something grammatically incorrect, and you'll be able to notice it right away. When you have the good intuition in the language that a native does, You know, with the, which is subconsciously programmed in your brain, like you'll be able to immediately catch it. Like when someone says, I has a cheeseburger, like you'll be able to immediately be like, oh crap, s- something's wrong. But who told you that? Like, why does it feel like, why, why does every time I say, I is a cheeseburger, 
Like, why does that sound wrong? Why, like, we say I am a cheeseburger, but why does I is a cheeseburger sound off? Like, why does it sound off? It's because your intuition, your subconscious brain has already programmed the grammar patterns of English into your subconscious brain. So the moment someone says something wrong, you will be able to intuitively, and it just feels off, right? So this is an example of developing intuition in a language. So this is not conscious work here. This is feeling, this is intuition you're developing, right? Which you've already developed through all the years of input. Right? When I was immersing in Japanese for two years, I only focused on intuition, increasing intuition. Right? So even if I made a mistake in Japanese, I was able to quickly catch myself and like say, oh crap, that was wrong. You know what I mean? I was able to very quickly adjust, you know? Because when I said something wrong, I was able to correct myself because I understood the flaw. See, a lot of people that don't immerse themselves or they don't understand the language enough, when they make a mistake that a native points out to them, sometimes they don't even understand the mistake. They can't even comprehend the mistake because they're so off in terms of intuition that they're not like on the same page as a native. Like when a native is correcting you, you want to be on the same page as a native, right? In order for that to happen, you got to be and develop the same level of intuition as a native. Just like how I say when I say I has a cheeseburger or he, he have a cheeseburger. Like when I say that, that sounds off. That's intuition, guys. And you need to be at the same level of intuition with all the languages, right? When, when you want to speak. So... That is why we focus on, you know, listening first before you start to speak. But when you do speak, you know, it's going to be very easy to just speak. You know what I mean? You're going to be able to, and you know, it takes a little bit of time. It may, it may take like two weeks before you start to like speak fluently. And of course, it's not going to still, even after two weeks of speaking just only a language for two weeks in the country, like you're going to get fluent, but you're not going to be perfect. Okay. Like, don't get this wrong. Like, we're not going to be perfect. Okay. Like, you know. But if you were to live in the country for like maybe a year, like after that, like you'd be perfect pretty much. You'd be close to perfect in terms of like the, the mistakes you make in grammar I'm talking about, right? Maybe like your pronunciation, like you can work on that a little bit. Um, and that just depends on how many, you know, hours of listening in comparison to reading you did. But in terms of grammatical errors and word choices, you should be close to perfection if you live in the country for a year, like after all the immersion. Right, but you'll be fluent within like two two weeks. Within two weeks, you'll be fluent, right? And that means that you'll be able to like speak like pretty fluently um, without making like that many mistakes. Like maybe you might make mistakes like one out of ten times. Like that's basically like, but it's very infrequent. You know what I mean? So it's not gonna be you're not gonna be making that many mistakes. But you know, it's gonna be very close to perfect. But if you want to really reach perfection, you're gonna have to like stay in the country for a long period of time in order for that to happen. But that's basically how I would approach listening, guys. I mean, to how I would approach speaking. So I'll basically immerse myself in the language for a very long period of time, develop an intuition for the language, then go to the country and speak the language to the people. And I'll be able to rapidly increase my comprehension and my, increase my ability to speak. And I'll be able to speak more fluently that way. And I think this is like a more streamlined approach to learning how to speak.